City Field in New York. Pix 11 Sports presents New York Mets baseball today. The Mets play the Arizona Diamondbacks. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by Hyundai. Make a connection to the road in the new Sonata. Visit your Hyundai dealer today. By Verizon Fios. Now there's a totally new way to customize your TV only from Verizon Fios. By Land Rover above and beyond. By Six Flags. Say big on Six Flags Great Adventure tickets at SixFlags.com. By Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. And by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on their most exciting lineup ever. It is a perfect summer Saturday afternoon in New York. And going all the way back to the days of Shea Stadium, the New York Mets have always been known for their pitchers. Back in the 1960s and 70s, it was Tom Seaver from the right side, Jerry Kuzman from the left side. In the 1980s, Doc Gooden ruled the roost. And now at City Field, the Mets are putting together another young cadre of tremendous pitching. And we've seen it the last couple of nights. Jacob DeGrom, 10 strikeouts on Wednesday. Noah Syndergaard, 13 strikeouts last night. Today, the baton gets passed to Matt Harvey. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to City Field. Gary Cohen, Keith Hernandez with you today as the Mets play the middle game of their series against the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Mets have put together one of the great young pitching staffs in many years in baseball, even with the injuries to Steven Matz and Zach Wheeler. Quite a cadre of five young starting pitchers all maturing at the same time. Well, we saw a great performance last night in Noah Syndergaard, one of the great power performances I've seen in a long time. I'm raving about it to this day. But you look at this uh, starting rotation, Syndergaard, Harvey, DeGrom, DeGrom an all-star this year. Harvey was an all-star last year. A Whaler who will be back next season in the middle of the way. And then in Mats, of course. I, what impresses me most about these young men is, of course, their youth. But they've got three, four pitches, and with command of all of them, they've all got guts, and they all throw hard, hard, hard. It's a hard day's work coming to the ballpark. You're a team coming on the road. You don't even bother to look at who's pitching because you're going to face four tough guys or three tough guys if you're coming in for whatever, however long the series is. Well, mostly on the strength of that starting pitching, the Mets find themselves only two games out of first place. They haven't hit very well this year, but with that pitching, they don't require a whole lot of offense. Well, it takes the pressure off of the offense when you have a, a, a good pitching staff, and in this case, the starting rotation, because as an offensive team, and we felt this in a in the 80s with our staff we get we score three runs we're going to win that's all we need to get uh, this team has struggled I mean as much as I've seen any team struggle in, in my 17 years uh, in, in, in 10 years plus in the booth but they starting to pick it up a little bit starting to score some runs and we saw it last night they got four runs guess what it's a big W that's are 32 and five this year when they score four runs or more they'll try and do the same for Matt Harvey Matt didn't have as good command as last time out against the uh, Dodgers and he walked five batters well his last three starts he's without a win his last win was in Toronto where he threw seven shutout innings against the the Blue Jays he's a two and one lifetime uh, in three starts against Arizona he's looking to break it he's got a hundred strikeouts in 104 innings again yes another one of those young Met power pitchers two years ago Matt Harvey was an all-star so was Patrick Corbin both missed all of last year following Tommy Johnson yeah, and an all-star Corbin back in 2013 when he won 14 games and a gold glove uh, this is his second start he came uh, he pitched and got a win five innings eight hits gave up two runs at home against Colorado he's winless in three starts 0 and 2 against the Mets career just his second start back from Tommy John surgery today the Mets and the Diamondbacks all the action on picks 11.
Those on more screens, Tom Warner Cable enjoy better. Follow the Mets wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. See, the uh, themes of the game are brought to you by Hyundai. And of course, with Matt Harvey on the hill, we have a Batman theme, Gotham City. You see the win percentage at home, the Metsies, and Two Face, a.k.a. Harvey Dent. Harvey's two starts, last four, and outstanding. Mr. Freeze, Otto Preminger in the old Batman series. Chris Owens, he's in a funk. Mr. Frozen. Freeze, huh? He's frozen. <laughs> Mets and D-backs on a gorgeous Saturday. Come on back. First pitch is coming right up. And beyond. Diamondbacks, the leading run scoring team in the National League, but they were held to two runs and six hits last night. They've got Paul Goldschmidt, who's second in the league in both on base and slugging, behind Bryce Harper, A.J. Pollock, who's also like Goldschmidt going to the All Star game. One change in their lineup Cliff Pennington gets a start at shortstop with Nick Ahmed, who did not run out the last play of the game yesterday, getting the day off. And there's Matt Harvey, warm, taking his warm ups, the 100 strikeout plateau. On its pace for, for for 200 strikeouts, which I always think is something special for a pitcher. He's looking to break that two game losing streak. He's pitched better than his record. And we'll take a look at the defense brought to you by Kia. That's your Metropolitan defense. And Mayberry getting a start today out in right field with the left hander on the mound, Patrick Corbin. On the infield, Eric Campbell gets a start. Murph said he's got a little bit of dead legs. And uh, Campbell will get the start with the left hander out there coming off a big game in San Francisco and uh, Polecki behind the plate. Matt Harvey had really been on a roll. His three prior starts before the one in LA, he had a 0 0.46 ERA, but did not have his command last Saturday. Averaged 20 pitches an inning. He'll need to be sharper today against the Diamondbacks. AJ Pollock takes a fastball for a strike. And we're underway. Pollock opened last night's game with a double against Noah Syndergaard, came around to score, and that's the only run Syndergaard gave up. Pollock having a terrific year, hitting a 304, 10th in the National League. And Harvey misses with a slider, a ball and a strike. Well, Harvey said of his last start, if you read his quotes, really the first time with a six man rotation that were reinstituted, and he said he was just a struggle for him every inning. So this is his second time around and uh, I'm sure he's made his adjustments in between. And I think that was his point that he was going to have to figure it out. Right. And Terry Collins 
basically reiterated those thoughts that he's just got to figure out how to best deal with it. He comes upstairs with a fastball to get even on Pollock two and two. Well, let's face it. I don't think there's any pitcher on this in this rotation that likes the six man rotation. Uh, they all want they're all geared. It's like it, it's something foreign for them. It's like pitching once a week. It's not what they're they're used to. Two two to Pollock. And the slider misses away. Well, it's interesting because the six man was instituted to help the younger guys keep their innings down. The guys who I think it helps the most are the two older guys, John Nice and Bartolo Colon. And Nice has just been spectacular, has he not of late? Inside ball four. So Harvey, who walked five in five innings in his last start, walks his leadoff batter today. So Pollock, who can steal bases, is aboard. And David Peralta coming up. Peralta one for four last night had an opposite field double. Well, Pollock's got 20 stolen bases. He stole his 20th last night. Nineteen, excuse me. Peralta at 265. And he hits a rocket toward the gap in right center field, headed back toward the wall, and it's out of here. David Peralta, first pitch swinging, crashes a two run homer, his eighth of the year, and two batters into the game. The Diamondbacks have a 2 0 lead. The 11th home run Harvey has given up of his third of his 14 to it have been to left hand hitters. So that's been an issue for him and it's usually been this Gary this fastball where he gets it down and too much of the middle. And that ball was crushed. So Harvey gets jumped a walk and a two run homer and he's in an immediate hole and now he faces Paul Goldschmidt it takes a slider for a strike. Goldschmidt was held in check last night. He had a first inning sacrifice fly, even that wasn't very well struck, and wound up going 0 for 3 for the night. And Harvey misses high, 1 and 1. Well, there it is, right down the pipe and down. That's right. It's anybody would like to hit that pitch. And he covers it pretty good right there. Walt is eighth of the year. He's now driven in 38. And Goldschmidt takes a strike, 1 and 2. Talked to a couple of the guys in the in the radio booth. Tom Candiotti is the radio for the Arizona, and Luis Gonzalez was here last night. They said they didn't see Goldschmidt all year get overpowered like he was with Syndergaard last night. Goes down looking at a curveball, so Harvey has his first out, and it comes via the strikeout, one away. Overhand hook, no slider, right there. Well. Harvey's got a tough act to follow after the last two games. Jacob DeGrom struck out 10 against the Giants on Wednesday. Noah Syndergaard, a career high 13 last night. Believe it or not, and I was shocked to hear this, it's the first time the Mets have had back to back games where their starters struck out double digits since 1999. The last weekend of the 99 season when the Mets have to win every day to get in the postseason. Tomas grounds one out to second, and Flores makes the play for the second out. The last Friday of the season, Kenny Rogers struck out 10 against the Pirates, and the last Saturday of the season, Rick Reed struck out 12. And that was the last time the Mets had starters go back to back with 10 or more strikeouts. Now that's shocking to me. I would have thought that sometime in the intervening 16 years that would have happened. And Rick Reed really wasn't a strikeout. No, and pitcher. neither was Kenny Rogers. Right. That swept that weekend series, forced a one game playoff. For the wild card and beat the Reds in Cincinnati to get into the postseason that year. And that was Al Leiter's masterpiece, yeah. correct? Shut him out. And did he strike out double digits? No. Nor did, I forgot who started the last game on Sunday. Here's the 1 0. Good. And a check swing. Lamb takes change up for a strike. Good, one one. good change by Matt right there. It's funny how Matt. Early in the game, in the first couple innings, is when he gets hurt with the long ball, particularly against the lefties. 14 home runs allowed this year. That's more than he had allowed in his entire career. That's 12 and 13 combined coming into the season. Look at that. 14 home runs in 99 innings, just 12 in over 240 innings before this. Lamb foul tips it, strike three, side retired. 
So Harvey bounces back with a couple of strikeouts, but the Diamondbacks strike early. David Peralta's two run homer gives Patrick Corbin and the D backs a 2 0 lead. And not coincidentally, Ligaris will lead off for the Mets in the bottom of the first. Here is your Mets starting lineup brought to you by Land Rover above and beyond. Granderson and Murphy both out of the lineup today against the left hander, so Ligaris will lead off for the fifth time this year. John Mayberry gets a start in right field, and Eric Campbell a start at third base against Patrick Corbin who was the ace of the Diamondback staff till he went down with Tommy John surgery and his second start uh, since coming off the disabled list and there's his numbers he's not a guy that walks people give up a lot of hits not a strikeout guy sinker slider and we'll take a look at the Kia D back a defense Tomas and Peralta had a couple line drives that fell in front of them yesterday Pennington gets the start at shortstop today. I guess you could call this a day game after uh, a it night game. It is technically a day game. Start, anything that starts before 5 o'clock is technically a day game. Lionel Garris takes low and away for ball one, and it's a sunny late afternoon game, which means at some point shadows are going to play a factor, so it would certainly behoove both teams to score early, and the Diamondbacks already have. Garris watches outside, 93 from Corbin, 2 0. Well, you can see a spectacular day. Great day to play. There's his first strike, two and one. Corbin's 25. He grew up in upstate New York, just north of Syracuse, born in Clay, New York, went to high school in Cicero, New York, about five miles away. And he's got a lot of family and friends here today. Call strike to Ligaris, two and two. He has pitched here. Before and he has not fared particularly well against the Mets. No, he's been treated kind of rudely. He came up in 2012 and he was not successful. Grounded to shortstop, Pennington flashes over and throws out Ligaris one away. But then in 2013, he he developed his slider and he got off to a spectacular start that year. Made the All-Star team. In fact, the first four months of 2013, he was 12 and two with a 2.24 ERA. He fell off the last couple of months of that season and then a year ago March the elbow flared up and he had Tommy John surgery March 24th of last year from 12 and 2 to finish at 14 and 8 yeah. that is a bad finish. So it's taken him 15 and a half months from Tommy John surgery to his return to the mound which he made last Saturday against the Rockies. Here's Ruben Tejada and Ruben skies one foul. Goldschmidt gives a look, but that'll go out of play. So while Harvey didn't get back into a major league game 17 months, till 17 months after surgery, Corbin's come back in 15 and a half, which I think is pretty close to the norm these days. 
And it's very instructive for the Mets. Yes. As they look forward to Zach Wheeler's return next year. Lamb feels the ground ball. So two ground ball outs for Corbin to start his afternoon. And there are two out and nobody on. In typical sinker baller fashion, two ground balls. So here's Michael Kadir, who returned to the lineup last night after missing six of the previous eight starts and promptly hit a home run his first time up. His first in five weeks. Well, how long had the Mets gone homerless, Gary? How well, many? They went nine games without a home run. Then Campbell hit one in the ninth inning Wednesday. And then Duda and Kadir went deep in the first inning last night. And he loops one the other way. That'll fall in for a base hit. So Kadir has a two out single, and the Mets have their first base runner of the day. Well, always good to see Kadir go to the opposite field. It's something he hasn't done. He's been out in front pulling too much. That's been part of his woes, I'm sure, as well as his bulky knee. A little bit towards the end of the bat. That knee has been diagnosed now as a bone bruise. And it's just something he's going to have to live with. And as long as he can tolerate the pain, he can play through it. Here's Wilmer Flores, who was two for three last night. And Wilmer flies one out to right, and Tomas should be able to grab this and does, and that retires the side. A hit and one left. We go to the second, two nothing Arizona. Pence at a grand slam amongst the Giants 22 hits as they blasted the Phillies and Cole Hamels. Brian Dozier didn't make the all-star team but he capped off a seven run bottom of the ninth for the Twins with a three run homer as they beat the Tigers. Mike Trout and C.J. Crone each at two home runs for the Angels. They're now just a half game behind the Astros for the lead in the American League West. Where's the rain in the forecast? I believe he's using that as a parasol. <laughs> the dark night masks out in force. Harvey got dented early by David Peralta's two run homer. Wellington Castillo leads off and takes a strike. Castillo one for three last night. Drove in a run with a ninth inning single against Jerry's Familia as the Diamondbacks tried to rally. Castillo has been really good since the D backs picked him up. Started the year with the Cubs, then the Mariners. There's a good curveball by Harvey, and it's nothing at two. Castillo hitting 286 since joining the Diamondbacks. Chris Owings on deck, and then Cliff Pennington, 6, 7, and 8 in the Arizona batting order. Well, the pitchers really like working with Castillo, too, the Arizona pitchers. Toward the hole, and that'll sneak through for a base hit. 
Flores was playing up the middle and that left Castillo plenty of space for a two strike hit to lead off the second. I always kind of like shifting the infield the opposite field just a shade when a hitter is well behind the count. They're more inclined to go the other direction. And there's the case right there. Case in point. Now Chris Owings. 0 for 4 last night. See that paltry on base percentage, 255. Lots of strikeouts. 79 on the year. Matt Harvey is 17th start of the year and his post Tommy John year has been a little pockmarked. Mm. Got off to a fantastic start hit a rut. Had three good starts in a row then he hit another speed bump in his last start and. I guess this is what you expect when a pitcher comes back. From Tommy John that he's going to show. Live moments but also have. His roadblocks. Well you remember when we talked with John Smoltz that one time. Here in New York. With Ronnie was in the booth uh, as well. That it's a difficult comeback the first year. That you're just you think you feel fine. I remember specifically what John Smoltz had to say, and he'd know he had Tommy John. And your body tells you you're you're ready to go, and it's just not there. It's 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 it, your mind. It's, it's an illusion. Well, in John's case, he was talking about having to learn a different way to throw his slider because yep. he just couldn't throw it the same way after the surgery. So there are a lot of little adjustments right involved. And he said and mentioned early he found out he would to make his pitch and he made his pitch and they still hit it and he just didn't have the zip on the fastball. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you have to confront and adjust. Three and one to Owings who rarely walks. And he lines one off the glove of Duna. He tries to make the tank can't and gets the out. By throwing it to Tejada. Well, Castillo rightly froze, thinking Duda was going to catch the line drive. And then he looted the tag. Had he been able to tag him, he might have had a chance for a double play. Well, this ball is ripped. And Duda almost got clocked in the forehead here. Tries to make the tag, get the lead runner. Yes. <laughs> he didn't have the ball in the glove when he tried to tag him anyway. Look at this. <laughs> that almost got his forehead. And that was pure defense. Literally. So it's a 3 6 force play for the first out, and Owings is aboard. That was three, uh, first and third written all over it. Very fortunate for the Mets. Here's Cliff Pennington getting the start at shortstop today, his 20th start of the year, giving Nick Ahmed the day off. Pennington, the former Oakland Athletic, now in his eighth big league season, lifetime 248 hitter. And Harvey bounces a curveball for ball one. Matt's feeling for his breaking stuff right now. He hasn't found the range. He's off. That starting pitching has been so good all year, yes, but more so lately. The last 14 games, the starters ERA for the Mets is 1.31. And that's why the Mets have been able to keep their heads above water even as their offense has floundered. Man, the bullpen has been up to snuff too. Led by Familia, who's been just about flawless. And I think Terry Collins has done a terrific job with the bullpen. Remember, you got Blevins on the DL forever. He may not even be able to come back. Vic uh, Black's never thrown a pitch this Vic year. Vic Black, I mean, big chunk of that bullpen core is not here. Eric, he Eric Goodell, who Goodell. was earlier yep. this year, he's out with the elbow. But Rafael Montero has never come back from shoulder problems. And on and on. He's used the young kids and talking about Robles, uh, Gil Martin. Uh, they've used him in, in, in good situations. So kudos to the skipper. And the Mets still haven't gotten Henry Mejia into a game. He's been back for three games now, but well, he's not found a spot for him yet. He's had him up a few times, including last night. One and two to Pennington. And he takes upstairs. Well, most important right now is for the Mets coming off that wonderful uh, road trip to the West Coast, which everybody was kind of started that trip in great trepidation. Uh, the four and two trip. You got two more games for the break. You want to carry that momentum. 
There goes the runner. Pitch inside. The throw is not a good one. And Owings has a stolen base, his 11th of the year. I don't think a good throw would have had him. He had such a good jump. Got caught a little bit of his footwork there. Got in an awkward position. Yeah, uh, Owens just too quick there. The Diamondbacks, their 80th stolen base of the year, their second leg in steals. 11th stolen base for Owings. Only caught once. Three and two to Pennington with the pitcher on deck. And the all speed pitch gets him looking. Harvey got. The call on the high changeup, his third strikeout. Well, what froze Pennington here is the fact that watch the movement of the ball. Starts out inside, didn't want that. Boy, it's right down the pipe if you stay in. But he quit on it and go grab some pine. Three strikeouts for Harvey, two out of the inning. And now Corbin, who's a lifetime 118 hitter. 0 for 1 so far this year. Owings at second and two out. Look at that's like a big uh, condor, isn't it? Crane, a whooping crane. Tucks the glove, and notice how he gets the balls released out in front of his body, in front of his head. I'm just glad that Matt is uh, in this start. What I've seen so far is that he hasn't won in three starts. He's pitched good in two of them, and he's not overthrowing. He's not losing his cool. He's staying within himself. And the shadows, Gary, we mentioned earlier, are beginning to creep close down the third base line, slightly in foul territory, and they will be a factor later on in this Wego. First the shadows of the light stanchions, then the shadow of the grandstand. And we'll be messing with the hitters in about a half hour or so. 2 1. And Corbin, a weak cut. 2 and 2. Corbin's a good athlete. He's a terrific basketball player in high school and put, could have played Division I ball, but opted to go the baseball route instead. He can still dunk from a standing position. It's pretty good. Jeez. I couldn't dunk. 2 2. Up and in. I mean, you always figure that the guys who are the good athletes should be able to handle the hitting part of the game rather than just be a pitcher who can't swing the bat. Well, handle it better. It's tough when you're pitching once, playing once every fifth day to keep a rhythm. Third full count already for Harvey. The runner goes and it's blue foul. Runner from second base, Owings taking off. I'm not sure what he was doing. Maybe he thought there was a runner at first. No, uh, no, I, I have no idea. <laughs> Reminds you of the play when Ruben Tejada in that rundown <laughs> ran out in the left field. <laughs> Harvey having to work hard against the opposing pitcher. And Corbin fouls off another one. So seven pitches deep in this at bat and still going. AJ Pollock would be next. Again, the three two, and again, a foul ball. If he threw him a little dead fish right here, he, he'd, he'd make him look like I won't say what like. Uh, the first thought that came into my mind would be very inappropriate on the air. Ninth pitch of the at bat, and he walked him. So Harvey walks the opposing pitcher to prolong the inning. His second walk. Pretty good at bat by Corbin there. Going into his last start against the Dodgers, Matt had walked 17 batters. In 15 starts, he walked five and five innings against LA, and now two walks in the first inning and two thirds today. It's been one of the uh, one of the real strengths of this Mets staff is their stinginess with walks. 
Mets have walked the second fewest batters in the league despite issuing the most intentional walks in the league. Dan Worthen with a little goatee working. Matt is not clean shaven for this start. It's true he shaved and got his season pointed in the right direction. But there's, after there's a the stumble against the Dodgers he's going in a different direction. Dan Worthen with his beatnik look. <laughs> Maybe you can buy him some Allen Ginsberg poetry. <laughs> Fill out the look. Doby Gillis. Two out and two on. Energy Krebs. Yes. Here's AJ Pollock. Pollock walked and scored in front of Peralta's home run on the first. It was a dangerous spot here for Harvey. Already down in the game, two nothing. They're already into 40 pitches. Pollock already has 100 hits this season. And he takes a fastball for a strike. These two guys know each other. Harvey and Pollock didn't grow up far apart. AJ is from Hebron, Connecticut. Toward the middle of the diamond. Tejada flashes over the backhand flip and he gets oh. the force. Nicely done by Tejada. He had to go a long way and got to it. And with the pitcher running, was able to get the force on Corbin at second base to get Harvey through the top of the second. Well, Corbin did not even slide, so that made it even better. Nice play. Still 2 0 Diamondbacks. On a perfect day in the harbor. We go to the bottom of the second. Let's check in with Eamon McEnany. Eamon? Well, Gary, at the top of the second, Matt Harvey was able to retire A.J. Pollock to get out of a jam. And as you mentioned, there is a connection there. They grew up about an hour apart from each other in Connecticut. Matt Harvey, the Gatorade Player of the Year in 07. Pollock, the Gatorade Player of the Year in 06. But even though they never played high school baseball against each other, they were fall Legion teammates one year. And I asked A.J. Pollock what the aura around Matt Harvey was even back then. And he said all he can really remember is that Harvey was the biggest guy on the team. He showed up. He threw 97 miles per hour and then he got in his car and went home he was almost like Jefferson from fast times at Ridgemont High but a bunch of uh, Pollock's high school teammates were down on the field for batting practice and I asked him if Harvey was a larger than life figure in the state of Connecticut back then and they said 
when you're from Norwich, Connecticut, and you're going to the University of North Carolina, every other high school player in the state of Connecticut knows who you are. And Gary, A.J. mentioned to me that he's looking forward to reconnecting with Harvey now that they're in the big leagues because, in his words, there aren't too many of us from small towns in Connecticut who have made it all the way to the Major League All-Star game. I think Matt was looking for tickets for Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> Nicely done. Lucas Duda goes down on three pitches. Corbin strikes him out with a slider. His first strikeout of the day. Out of the strike zone. It's kind of a theme. You can almost say it's a mantra. Is it a mantra or a mantra? Mantra. That's what I thought. I've heard people say mantra. I'm going, that doesn't sound right. Just say, oh. I remember my mantra. You wouldn't believe it in my young days. It lasted around 45 days, but then I shelved it. Here's John Mayberry with one out. Are, are you going to share? Or <laughs> no, I won't. You're not you? supposed to tell your I, mantra. I know. But I will not say that. You're supposed to tell your birthday wishes either, but some people do. No, I won't do it because I may go back to it. I need help. <laughs> one and one to Mayberry. John's was swinging the bat better. Particularly against left hand pitchers. Last seven games he started against the lefties, seven for 19, with four doubles and a home run. And that's what he was brought here for to rake against lefties, which he's done his entire career. It's one for two with a home run against Corbin. And he takes the pitch for a strike, two and two. John is a middle in hitter. He has a little difficulty with that outside corner. He pulls off. Tends to pull off in his swing. And he goes down swinging there. Another slider out of the strike zone. So back to back strikeouts for Corbin to start the second. Out in front, too. I always said it's a tough job. I, uh, I sympathize with the uh, bench player who gets the spot play. It's just hard to stay in a groove. It's really a job meant for a veteran. Which Mayberry is. Yes, he is. Here's Kevin Plowacki, 0 for 3 last night, but he's been swinging the bat well. He lined out twice in the game last night and drew a walk. Well, I'm talking in terms of in the day when you had the Phillies had Dell Unser, Greg Gross, Greg Gross, uh, Jay Johnstone. It was a heck of a bench. Yeah, the Dodgers always had a great bench with Manny Moda. Rick Monday, Joe Ferguson, they're all veteran players. By the way, Patrick Corbin is throwing much, much harder than he did in his first start coming back from Tommy John. He averaged 91.7 on his fastball, and he's been consistently 94 to 96 in the first two innings. And Plowecki goes down swinging, and so Corbin strikes out the side in the second inning. An impressive inning for Corbin. 2 nothing D-Bounds.
soon. He's got his Juan Lagares bobblehead in hand. And there's your future Met fans right there. A limited number of floor seats to see Foo Fighters right here at City Field have just been released and are available right now at Mets.com slash Foo Fighters. Don't miss your opportunity to see Foo Fighters right here at City Field. Go to Mets.com slash Foo Fighters. Dave Grohl in the group. I think Dave's got a throne he's going to be sitting on because he broke his leg recently. I like their music. Always have. David Peralta hit a first pitch two run homer his first time up swings at the first pitch breaking ball this time and fouls it off and yeah first pitch home run is right he gets a curveball. Peralta is a great story he's from Venezuela he first signed with the Cardinals as a pitcher in 2004 as a 16 year old and the Cardinals released him he went to independent ball eventually made the switch to the outfield just four years ago. And signed with the Diamondbacks and now making his case for an everyday job. Pops one up into shallow center. And Lagaris is there. And Peralta retired one away. Well, Peralta's home run was the first run of the game brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. First pitch fastball down in the middle. And that was a line drive bullet over the 380 sign. That's a bomb. Hit well. Talked about Peralta bidding for full time duty. When we were in Arizona, Ender in Ciarte had a terrific series. He's out with a hamstring, but should be back soon. And you know, with Pollock and Tomas and Peralta and in Ciarte, they really will have four guys for three spots. And Chip Hale's intention is to play all four of them, but you know how those things work out. Sometimes one guy loses out. And so Peralta, in a period of time right now where he's trying to state his case. No, it always makes your bench stronger. I mean, Pollock's not going anywhere. He's an all star and best center fielder of the group. And Tomas, they gave $68 million to, so he's not going anywhere. But just the fact that Peralta's playing the outfield in the big leagues is stunning given his backstory. Goldschmidt goes down looking for the second time. Took the fastball on the outside corner, and Harvey has his fourth strikeout. No, well, they've been. Handling Goldsmith thus far. Syndergaard just ate him up last night, but I think Syndergaard would have cruised through the 27 Yankee lineup. And Goldsmith had an opposite field home run against Harvey down in Arizona. That pitched a good game that day and won, gave up just two runs in seven innings, but Goldsmith took him deep, but he's handled him so far today. Here's Yasmani Tomas, and he takes a strike. That's have had. Big problems with Tomas. Harvey got him on a ground ball first time up, but he's six for 14 now against the Mets. And he hits one through the hole. He's got another hit. So Tomas with a two out single. That's the third Arizona hit. Off the breaking ball hanging. You can see when you're a pitcher right there and you make a hanging breaking ball like that, you're happy it's just a base hit. That's the interesting thing about Tomas, isn't it? I mean, he was signed because of his power numbers, and he hasn't hit for power at all, but he's done a terrific job of hitting for average. Here's Jake Lamb, who struck out his first time up. He's had a very rough series so far. Struck out three times last night. He takes a strike. Well, he gives him that left hand bat in the middle of the order. It's only Peralta, Lamb, and the switch hitting Pendleton, Pennington, excuse me, that are left hand hitters in the lineup. Castillo would be next. Good crowd gathered on a Saturday afternoon. Why not? Why not indeed? There's the breaking ball again that Matt's having a hard time getting over. Early in this game. Oh, look at the kids. Uh, Sweet. Got the popcorn. Got the pink glove. 
All set for a day at the game. Be nice to your sister. Oh, share your popcorn. Very nice. One two coming. On the inside corner and Lamb is struck out again. Five strikeouts and six at bats for young Jake Lamb in this series. Five strikeouts and three innings for Harvey, but the Mets down two nothing going to the bottom of the third. Afternoon. Mets down two nothing. Everybody's got the popcorn going. This hey, afternoon. the kids are out of school. She's a little strawberry blonde. She gets very fair. She's got to watch out that sun doesn't burn her face. See, I don't know. When I came to the ballpark as a kid, I always wanted peanuts, not popcorn. Popcorn you get anywhere. Here's your high-speed pitch from Tom Warner Cable. To enjoy better. But peanuts at the ballpark. That I agree. Something about. Getting the, the shells the out. Shells, yeah, and you can drop them anywhere and you Make don't have to worry about floor. it. Exactly. That and a hot dog. <laughs> and a soda pop. Eric Campbell making his 38th start this year. This is the Mets' 88th game. Started on Wednesday in San Francisco. Hit a two run homer in the ninth inning to help put that game away for Jacob DeGrom. Campbell playing third base today, giving Daniel Murphy and his, what do you say, sore legs? He's tired. Tired. Dead legs. I've had him once a few times in my career. I know exactly what it is. And what's the great uh, recipe for that uh, recipe? I guess the get well, the remedy, excuse me, is to get into a iced whirlpool and turn those jets on. It reinvigorates your legs. It's, uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's magical. Well, Murph was out a little over three weeks with the quad injury. He's been back for 10 games. And you know the Mets made no bones about the fact they were trying to rush Murphy back because they needed his bat. So it's it certainly makes sense he'd be a little sore. Campbell takes strike three call. Got him looking at a slider. That's four consecutive strikeouts for Corbin, who's not really a strikeout pitcher. Well, you got John Hurst back behind home plate, who was a pitcher's umpire, and he is calling inside strikes. And we'll see. Yeah, it's too close to take. I'd have to say it's a strike. Now, if you're Ted Williams, Pete Rose, it's a ball. They're not playing anymore. <laughs> Matt Harvey, three hits this year. Trying to keep up with his mates who have been stinging the ball. And he pulls this one oh. sharply, but Lamb makes a terrific backhand play. Low throw, but Goldschmidt handles that. Lamb took a double away from Harvey with a neat play for the second out. Beautiful play, beautiful backhand. Double written all over it. Very nice. And a nice scoop by Goldschmidt. Gold Glover. 
Easy scoop though the old short hop. Good hands. Can't make hands they're, they're God given. Either you got good hands or you got. Stone hands. Just stay away from fireworks. <laughs> A two out and nobody on here is Juan Lagares. Who grounded out to short his first time up and he hammers one into the ground. Pennington makes the pick. Side retired. So Patrick Corbin is alive just one hit over the first three innings and he's got a two nothing lead. My kind of my pet peeves. It's a risky play and it's not necessary. Ball hit hard. Watch the shortstop Pennington come in. And I know he's coming in to field it hard like that. Too many things could go wrong. You can get a bad hop. You come in hard. Now Lagaris runs well, but he's out by what? Three steps? You come in, yes, but you can settle in front of the ball and get your body in front and come up throwing. Too many things can go wrong, a bad hop when you feel it off to the side in the run. Now, if you have a runner like D. Gordon and you make a boo-boo, and it, then you've got to come in hard and make the throw. So clinic. We haven't had a clinic in a while for the so young kids. So you'd like to see Pennington come in those four strides and then break down and get in front of it. Yeah, come in hard and play either a long or short hop, but get settled, get, get in front. Right. And you got time because Lagares was thrown out by three feet. He's, he's, there's no need to. It's not, it's not like it's D. Gordon or a Billy Hamming, Billy Hamilton or Jose Reyes running the first base. Right. Wellington Castillo has one of the three hits against Harvey, and he takes curveball for a strike and so and two. Harvey got ahead of him 0 and two first time, and Castillo punched a single through the right side. Um, Dude is playing a little further off the line to close down that hole against Castillo. Strike three call got him looking at a fastball. That's six strikeouts for Harvey, and five of the six have come on call third strikes. He's really locating his fastball well. And you know me, I am a proponent of the head and the count aggressively pitching inside and ties him up inside beautifully. Let me ask you this, Keith. For Matt Harvey, the five call third strikes, most he's ever had in his career. Now, does that just tell you that he's particularly precise, or is that about who the home plate umpire is as well? Well, you got to take the whole package in here. He's not getting his curve over right now, he's breaking stuff. He's getting his change over. It's just all about him. He's elevating his fastball well, and he's spotting in and out with his fastball. It's been his primary pitch. It's that curveball in for a strike, and it's one on one. There are your umpires. We had an odd situation today. Uh, Chad Whitson was supposed to umpire at first. He's on his way, and Trip Gibson is filling in for him until he arrives. Grounder for Tejada. And he throws out Owings two away. So Harvey with a chance for his first one, two, three inning of the afternoon. 
And it seems like Matt settled in here. He got kind of uh, sneak attacked, ambushed by Peralta in that first inning. First pitch fastball swinging the two run shot. That's the difference in the game. Yeah, much like Chase Anderson for the Diamondbacks last night gave up the two first inning home runs and then didn't allow anything else. But the four runs were enough for the Mets. Pennington took a call third strike his first time up. And nice. He takes a curveball for a strike. There's the old over the top 12 to 6 curve that I like Matt but he throws it against the left handers on the outside corner. Pushing the bunt Campbell lets it roll and it comes up dead in the grass for a bunt hit. Not the greatest play in the world with two out of the pitcher on deck but but it does it does clear the pitcher the, spot exactly. We've got a guy in Pennington who hasn't had a lot of playing time. And you said Gare a lifetime 240 hitter. So that works good. It's always love that super it's slow. Ball tumbling on the grass. What a great sport. Love the day games. Here's Corbin who walked his first time up. You're such a romantic. I love ba I love day baseball. I always love to play day uh, day games, even though you know it was hot. It's good to get out and sweat. You really felt like you put in a hard day's work. You know, our director Dan Barr just showed us a guy in a Harvey jersey sitting next to somebody who had a flower ad on his back. I, I I think we should get you some flowers. I think it's perfect time for that. Seriously, I mean, you're just in that mood. Oh, I've been in a good mood all day. I know you're very perky. Yes, I took a nice swim this morning. It was just a beautiful morning, wasn't it, folks? 0 2. Struck him out. Seven strikeouts in four innings for Matt Harvey. So he's hitting his stride. Now the Mets need to get him some offense against the lefty Patrick Corbin. 2 0 D back, setting to the bottom of the fourth. America runs on Duncan. Share and share alike. Well, ice cream for dad. It is. Okay, it's yours now. It is summer. And the kids are out of school. And it's nice to see them at the ball yard. How do they do that, by the way, with the half vanilla, half chocolate cone? It's so perfectly aligned there. Mm -hmm. it's Modern out. technology is just an amazing thing. It's my favorite ice cream cone, actually. Is that right? The the uh, the black and white. Yeah. You like that? Well, that was the um, good humor ice cream right there. You know. Is that right? Yeah. That's. Uh, you know all about the good humor. Yes, ice I cream. do. I'm partial to the chocolate eclair. That's a good one. I'm a, I got a sweet tooth. And the shadows. 
are not quite out far enough to affect the hitter yet. Too close to home plate, but you can see right there that they're right around the fringe. Nice change up from Corbin. Moving to Hoddock, grounded out to third his first time up there at the shadows of the light stanchions. Not out far enough yet to affect negatively affect the hitter. Corbin hasn't needed the help of the shadows so far. He has been very sharp in his second start back from Tommy John surgery. Gave up eight hits in five innings against the Rockies his first time out. Only one hit in three innings today. Only 30 pitches in the first three innings. And he's been throwing harder, much harder than he did his first start. That's 93, 94. And he's been very cost effective here. 33 pitches with four strikeouts. Dyer and Flores to follow in the home for it. Mm. Not a strikeout victim. Five strikeouts already for Corbin. With one down in the fourth. Yeah, that was all set up. Let him off with a change up, then two pitches in, then drops the back door off speed slider on him. And Ruben fooled completely. Waves at it. Now Michael Kadir who dumped a base hit into right field his first time up. He's been the Mets only base runner today. Kadir was mired in a two for 36 hole till the Mets got to San Francisco. He's five for nine since. Including a home run yesterday. And Corbin falls behind him two and out. Well, I don't know how badly his knee is bothering him, but one thing is for certain Michael Kadir is due for a hot streak. He's been too good a hitter for too long to hit 240 all year. Unless it's the knee, it's preventing him. I talked to him in the clubhouse this morning, and uh, he said it. It's, uh, it's, it he feels it when he swings, so it's always in the back of your mind. Lifetime numbers. Lamb picks the ground ball and throws out Kadir two away. It's nine in a row retired by Corbin since Kadir's base hit in the first. Well, the Mets scored four runs in the first inning yesterday. They have not scored since. It's 11. That's right. 10 straight innings without a run. Going on 11. Here's Flores who flied out to right his first time up. But I think the number that we dispensed during the open today is very telling. All the Mets need to do is get to four. When they score yes. four runs this year, they're 32 and five. That's how good their pitching has been. Well, stands to reason. Three runs, I think. I'd like to know what their record are with three runs. We always felt we'd score three runs in our rotation in the 80s, and we'd still a doggone good chance of winning a ball game. And like I said in the open, it takes so much of the pressure off the offense. And the offense has been down from last year, and then yet the Mets were nine games under 500 at this point this year, three years over because the pitching has been that good. The pitching has been yes that much better. Here they are. We're two games from the All-Star break, and the Mets are two games out of first place. Right in the thick of it. Two-two coming, and that's inside. Well, we've been saying it all year. You know, the Mets are being gifted an opportunity with the Nationals not running away with things, and you know the Nats are still in a situation where half their starting lineup is on the disabled list. So no matter how well they pitch, their offense has had trouble gearing up. Slowly hit to Owings. So Corbin continuing to roll. He's retired ten in a row. We played four now at City Field. Diamondbacks two, Mets nothing.
Diamondbacks at 110. The first 15,000 fans will receive the Mets jersey drawstring bag, courtesy of Verizon. Keith already is using I, his. Yes, I, it's terrific. For tickets, visit Mets.com slash Family Sundays. You couldn't grab that bag fast enough I, last night. I didn't realize it was yours. You put all your stuff in your old jersey drawstring bag, and I, you were off. I put my my uh, shirt, my polo shirt in there, and my uh, <laughs> pants, because I switched into my Bermudas for the drive home. Maybe too much information. Well, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> Were those your crab Bermudas? No, it was scorpions. Oh, I wore the scorpions, scorpions last night. Sorry, I couldn't tell the difference. Third time around the batting order for Matt Harvey. A.J. Pollock leads off in the fifth. Pollock walked and scored in the first and hit a ground ball behind the bag at second. And Ruben Tejada made a nifty play to get a force play. And Get Harvey through that second inning. Whoop, big inning for Matt right here. Top of the order, fifth inning. 89 pitch, uh, 69 pitches, excuse me. David Peralta, who has the big blow in this game, is on deck. He's wearing the black hat so far. Half swing by Pollock, two and one. So, which villain is he? It's not the Joker. No. Not the Riddler. King Tut? No. Two and two to Pollock. Victor Bono. The Penguin? Oh, it could be the Penguin with the top hat. Yes. The Tuxedo <laughs> hat, of course. <laughs> Bruce Meredith, right? Yes. Danny DeVito played. Very creepy. Very creepy penguin in the movie version. Yeah, the Dark Knight doesn't really mesh with the campy series of the 60s. You know. 3 2 coming, and the curveball sits high ball four, and so Pollock walks for the second time. Both have come leading off innings, and that's a dangerous path to tread for Harvey because Pollock has stolen 19 bases this year and that puts him in the top five in the league. Stolen base leaders brought to you by Larceny Bourbon. Now that's a perfect sponsorship right. 92 proof small batch bourbon unlock smoothness. Mm -hmm. Reminds me of uh, one of the W.C. Fields con uh, characters in the movies. Larson E. Whipsnay. <laughs> Here's Peralta and he has to Move his feet, ball one. Well, let's see how Chip Hale plays this one. Up to nothing, lead off, walk. Corners have got to be in. Of course, Duda's holding the runner on, but Campbell is in at the corner a little bit. Hit and run. There's a lot of things a manager can do here. Peralta's home run was his eighth of the year. Big shadows in front of home plate now. That's making a little bit more difficult. I mean, already, I mean, come on, you fail 70% of the time, you're a great hitter. You're making it tougher with the shadows. Good fastball. Matt's throwing hard. Harvey has struck out seven. He's walked three. Allowed two runs and four hits. Given up one stolen base today, eight this year in ten tries. Doesn't have the great move to first base. Well, two pitches in this at bat. He's moved Peralta off the plate. See if he drops a change up here. He's not hasn't got the confidence with his breaking ball right now. He's hasn't found the consistency at all. He's barely thrown a slider at all. Relying more on his curveball today. Trying to get him to roll over a fastball away. There goes Pollock. The throw by Pluecki. A good one. And he got it. Kevin Ploiecki with a perfect throw guns down A.J. Pollock for the first down. I'll tell you what, Ploiecki can throws outstanding. He's got good footwork here. Quickness, no wasted motion. 
Can't ask for more. That's a huge throw out. And Tejada gets the tag down. Jeff Hell waiting for his replay coordinator to let him know whether to challenge, but this certainly looks like Pollock was out. And there will be no challenge. So Pollock caught for the sixth time this year. One out and nobody on, two and two to Peralta with Goldschmidt on deck. And he misses with a slider, three and two. Yep, got him on the thigh before he got to the bag. That was a hit and run count, too. Two and one. Well, another walk. So after Pollock's walk is erased, Harvey walks the next batter, and now he'll have to face Goldschmidt with a man on. It's four walks now for Matt, who walked five in five innings in his last start. Footwork, watch Pollocky. His footwork. Nice shift and throw. Effortless, really. That's just can't ask for more. Right there. Here's Goldschmidt, who's twice taken call third strikes today. And that's uh, struggling a little bit here, up with his pitches. It's a good time for Powecki showing some being a part of the game here. A good time to go talk to him and just give him a breather. Big hole on the left side for Goldschmidt. And he hits one to the left side, but not hard. Campbell's play is to first. And Goldschmidt retired as Peralta moves to second, two out. Well, Goldschmidt has been handled in this series thus far. Goldschmidt now 0 for 6 in the two games. What you hope is that you can get him out of town before he gets going. Ex precisely. So he'll be going to Cincinnati from here. He'll be starting at first base for the National League in the All Star game, having a phenomenal season, but not so far in this series. So here's Tomas, who's one for two, single to left his last time up. Peralta at second and two out. Curveball pulled foul. Tomas, just one of the latest. Of an extremely talented crop of Cuban players who found their way to the major leagues. You know, even when I was a kid growing up, I remember my father saying how Cuba had the wealth of baseball talent that just couldn't get out, of, get off the island. Well, they haven't all been successful, but the success rate has been terrific these last few years. Well, what's it seems to me now, I think, with the opening up of, of, of Cuba, uh, we probably see more Cubans, I uh, think, will enhance the game uh, in, in considerably. And it's not like you're getting the Japanese players where you tend to get them older. Yeah. They've had their best years in Japan. You're going to get these guys in their prime and younger. Oh, two to Tomas. In Tomas's case, he played five years in the Cuban Professional League. I mean, think about Jose Fernandez, who defected when he was 15. Yep. Right. Went to high school in this country, but you know he counts among all these great Cuban players. Jose Abreu made a tremendous impact his first year in the big leagues. With the White Sox, Yasiel Puig, and what he's accomplished in a short period of time. I mean, the list goes on and on. Cespedes. Go back in the 60s, the lucky ones that got out. Right. Cookie Rojas, Tony Tony Perez. Perez. Louis Tiant. 0 2 coming. Strike three call. Strikeout number eight for Matt Harvey. And seven of the eight have come on call third strikes. Works around a couple of walks. Halfway through, still 2 0.
on balls out of the strike zone. Well, it's been a, kind of a, like we said, a mantra here, and it's all the same pitches. A couple of these I didn't think he swung, like right there. But nevertheless, he's that's not a swing. That's a swing. What does it all add up to? He's got to get make him get the ball up, the off-speed changeup, the curve ball. There's another changeup. That has been Lucas's problem. And the minute he lays off like that, he's going to be ahead in the count, like last night. Three-run home run on a 2-0 count. Yeah. Elementary. Dear Watson. And Corbin falls behind him 2-0. I don't think that they're pitching Lucas any differently than they were earlier in the season, but early in the season he was laying off those pitches and drawing a ton of walks. And that makes me think that with David Wright going down. It's this one, a deep left center field, back in the gap. Pollock takes a look and it's out of here. Another 2 0 pitch, another home run for Lucas Duda. Number 12 for Duda, and it cuts the Diamondbacks lead to two to one. Well, Gary, two and zero. Oh, that's how you confound Moriarty right there. Get ahead in the count. <laughs> Here's your villain. Get it over the back wall, over the great wall of Flushing. Yes, that's the kind of power that Lucas has. Now Mayberry hits one in the air to center. This one's playable for Pollock. And Mayberry retired one away. Just the second Matt hit of the day. One of the few times Corbin's been behind in the count today. And Duda makes him pay. Well, maybe Lucas is on the rise here. Maybe starting to come out of it, and that's more important. Two home runs. It doesn't matter if they're home runs, Gary, or line drives. Center field, left center field means he's waiting. There's Ploiecki. Let me give you a couple of facts about Duda's 12 home runs this year. 11 of his 12 home runs have come when he's ahead in the count. That's what you're talking about. But here's another quirky thing. All 12 of his home runs have been hit no later than the third pitch. Of the at bat. That's uh, no 2 1 pitches or 3 1 pitches. All within the first three pitches. Isn't that interesting? Been, uh, it means he's being ultra aggressive. And then you can, you know, I'd have to see each home run and each at bat where it's at as to form any kind of theory or formulate any opinion on it. it sounds like a quirky thing because you'd think, you know, you'd hit your share of home runs on. 3 1 pitches, for instance. Kolecki slaps one to the right side. And Owens makes the play two out. That's upcoming schedule brought to you by your Tri Honda dealer. One more game before the All Star break. That's tomorrow. Mets will reconvene in St. Louis on Friday night. Tough series. Cardinals and then the Nationals on yep. that road trip. And then they come home to play the Dodgers. And the Padres and the Nationals. So it's a very yeah. tough month. Mets were successful in a tough road trip out to California. And they'll have to keep playing as well with the competition level staying very high for the rest of the month. And the way to look at it is a positively is yes, it's a tough month, much like the last road trip of the West Coast, but it's also becomes a road trip, a, a, a series in the schedule. Where you can make hay. Well, especially with the two series against Washington, with the Mets two games behind the Nats in the standings. There you see the home road numbers. Certainly, the, those road numbers improved with four wins and two losses in California. Now Corbin behind on Campbell three and zero. Campbell took the call third strike his first time up. There's a strike. Another interesting thing about Duda and his home runs, his first 10 home runs this year were all pulled. Yesterday he hit one to dead center, today to left center. First two this year that have not been hit to right field. That's pulled down to third, a foul ball. John Tumpain, the third base umpire, right on top of it to make the call. So four of Duda's home runs have been off left handers this year. 
Well, that's a hurdle that he appeared to clear early this season after so many struggles in his left season last year. There's so many eyes on him just because, let's face it, with David Wright and Travis Darnell out of the lineup, he and Kadire are the two guns in the middle of that right. order that the Mets need to get going. And that, you know, was they were the main culprits of this uh, struggling lineup. You know, they needed that any lineup. If your three, four hitters are not hitting, it's going to be a struggle. Campbell takes ball four. So a two out base runner. First walk of the day for Corbin. And now Matt Harvey will get a turn at that. So all walk Corbin's allowed this season. Of course, it's only his second start. So good signs for Lucas maybe coming out of it. It's, it's been a very, very, very long and frustrating slump for him. Well, here's Harvey who hit the ball very hard his first time up. Jake Lamb made a terrific backhand play and took a double away from him. And Harvey hits one well, deep left field. Back goes Peralta near the wall. It's out of here. Matt Harvey with a two-run homer, his first major league home. And the Mets go in front three to two. Peralta is claiming the fan reached over, but he reached over the railing, which is a home run anyway. So I don't think there's any doubt if they challenge that this will stand up. Harvey's first big league home run. Noah Syndergaard hit one earlier this year. And now Harvey's two run homer puts the Mets up three to two. The umpires are going to review this, but check this out. Harvey clouts it. The fan reaches over the railing, but that ball's over the orange line easily. I think so. Not even. There's not even a question here. That's a home run. Yes. Because that ball would have hit the the metal railing above the orange line had the fan not touched it. Peralta probably didn't know the ground rules here anyway. So they'll check it out, but undoubtedly the home run will stand and the Mets have the lead. Play under review brought to you by Mazda driving matters. Well, and the fans are seeing the replay now, which clearly indicates this is That's not fan run. interference, it's a home run. Well, the Mets pitchers have taken things into their own hands. Look at DeGrom. I'm talking about his hit and run single in San Francisco that opened up the floodgates of that win on that getaway day. It's going to be pressure on Jake now. He's got to hit a home run. <laughs> Syndergaard's gone deep. Harvey's gone deep. That was Matt's 110th major league at bat and his first big league home run. Now for Harvey, if this stands, you've got given yourself the lead. Close the door. Again, here's the replay. Just has to clear the orange line, which it clearly was going to if the fan touches it or not. I agree with you. I've seen many home runs hit off that metal fence, and the umpires confirm it is a home run. How about that? So Matt Harvey gives himself the lead. Two home runs in the inning for the Mets. Second time in two days they've had two home runs in an inning. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Well, we mentioned earlier that Matt's numbers were lagging his pitching mates at the plate, but he made up for that with one big swing. Make it stand now. Get out there and run it up four straight or whatever, however long you're in this game. Three more innings, three goose eggs. So Duda goes deep, Harvey goes deep, Mets up three to two. Now Juan Magaris up for the third time. Twice is grounded out to short. So Corbin was having his own way for the first four innings, but a couple of long balls with a walk squeezed in between. And the Mets have three runs here in the fifth.
before this season. No Met had hit a home run since Jeremy Hefner in 2012, and nobody before that since Johan Santana in 2010. But the Mets have got two home runs out of their pitchers this year, and there probably are more to come. This is quite a hitting pitching staff in addition to their pitching exploits. Athletes. Two and two to Ligaris. We showed the number last night how the Met pitchers have out hit Met pinch hitters. It might make Terry worry about going to his bench in the late innings. They should get the ammonia water down there, Gary, in a bucket. That was always the best thing in St. Louis. We had that. Gosh, it was so refreshing. Lamb charges the ground ball and throws on the run to get Lagares side retirement. The Mets grab the lead in the bottom of the fifth. Lucas Duda hits his second home run in two days. And Matt Harvey with his first big league home run, a two run shot that survives review. And the Mets lead 3 2 after five. And Chris Sale for the White Sox. Six strikeouts in the first four innings. White Sox won one nothing yesterday behind Jeff Samarja. Braves have home runs from Juan Uribe and Ryan Lavarnway. They're two two with the Rockies in the fifth. Marlins got shut out last night. They're up three two on the Reds, and there are the later games. Not pictured. The Nationals. I have to leave out the Nationals. Really, they're playing tonight. They're playing in Baltimore tonight with Jordan Zimmerman on the mound. You know why? Because it's in the American League Park. Yeah. So our computerized National League scoreboard did not acknowledge its existence. Right. So they're in both. They're playing the O's. They're one playing more problem with interleague play. They're playing the O's. <laughs> Jake Lamb flash went out to center. And Lagares squeezes it for the first out of the sixth down. Huge inning for Harvey here. Run a goose egg up. Taking the lead. Beginning of shutting the door. You wonder for a pitcher and. You know, I don't know that you can speak from experience on this, but you hit a home run, you get all that adrenaline flowing. I wonder whether that helps or hurts you the next inning on the mound. It never affected me in Little League. <laughs> yeah, but the bases weren't as far apart in Little League. <laughs> now Harvey faces Wellington Castillo, but I can see where you'd have to calm mm -hmm. yourself down a little bit. I mean, your heart's pumping, teammates are excited. Have to wait for the review. I'm impressed with all these of the Met pitching staff how they stay focused for their youth. You know, the one pitcher on the staff that gets a little bit rattled and fights himself is John Nice of the group. Randall Delgado up in the Diamondbacks bullpen, pitcher due to about fifth in this inning. There you go. Ooh, what was that one? Slider just missed to Castillo. That's at 90 pitches with one out of the six. So he may not go much beyond this. Although we thought that last night about Syndergaard. 
And he got that extra inning, pitched the eighth. Got to 116 pitches, which is the most any Mets starters thrown this year. Well, if he can go seven, Gare, and we're getting way ahead of ourselves here, uh, then that would set it up to get Mejia in to be the bridge to Mr. Familia. Well, whether he gets the seventh or not will depend on how much work he has to do get through this sixth. Right to Ligaris, doesn't have to move an inch. Two out. He's been elevating his fastball real well the whole game. Starting to get command of his fastball. I mean, his slider, excuse me, he's breaking stuff. Better. He hasn't had a real great hard, tight slider that we know that Matt can throw today, but he's made the adjustment. Still looking for his first one, two, three inning of the game. And gets the curveball over to Owings. Owens hit the ball very hard his first time up. Duda was able to knock down his line drive and get a force play. Pop foul. Duda hoping, but it's out of play. So if Pennington, the number eight hitter, would be next. Diamondbacks two runs four hits the Mets three runs and only three hits but two of them have been long balls by Duda and by that guy Matt Harvey's first big late home run putting the Mets in front. Oh two now to Owings struck him out nine strikeouts for Matt Harvey and his first one two three inning of the afternoon. Into the game on David Peralta's two run homer. The Mets trump that with Duda and Harvey's home runs in the fifth. Three to two New York as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Gorgeous view. Ruben Tejada leads off against Patrick Corbin. Tejada's grounded out and struck out 0 for 2. And Corbin threw 76 pitches in his first start against the Rockies last Saturday. It's only at 66 today. They do have warm up action going in the bullpen. Tejada hits one deep to left field. Back goes Peralta looking up, and it's out of here! Ruben Tejada with his second home run of the year. The Mets third home run of their last seven batters and they lead it four to two.
The Mets went nine games without a home run. They've now hit six home runs in their last 15 innings. Tries to come in with a fastball. To, oh, he got it in. Ruben turns on it. And that's a home run in the old ballpark. The old dimensions, I should say. And that's going to be all for Patrick Corbin. Murph loves it. Corbin gave the Diamondbacks four terrific innings, but in the span of seven batters, he gives up home runs to Duda, to Harvey, and now to Tejada. And so Patrick Corbin will watch the rest of this one from the sidelines. Call to the bullpen brought to you by Southpaw in theaters everywhere July 24th. Randall Delgado makes his way in. We'll be right back. This is his third season with Arizona. It was a big trade that brought him to Arizona from the Braves. It was the Justin Upton deal. Right. It was the deal that was Martin Prado, Nick Ahmed, who's playing shortstop. And you see also Aaron Hill in at second base, a flip flop in the lineup. Hill will bat ninth, Delgado seventh. Michael Kadire at the plate. And he launches one to deep left field. That goes Peralta, but he'll have room this time to make the catch. Boy, Mets. Trying to play home run derby. Three home runs in the last seven batters. Kadire got it a little off the end for the first out of the inning. No, so that's been what Michael's problem has been. He's just been a little quick. And this is a pitch to rip right down the pipe and just well, not that bad, really. He just got under it. He knows, look at that. He knew it. Mm. Now Flores takes the pitch low. Wilmer's 0 for 2, flyed out and grounded out. Well, Patrick Corbin's second start back from Tommy John surgery started brilliantly but ended in a barrage of home runs. Flores pops one straight up. Castillo trying to find it and does. Oh, there you go. And survives the backward barrel roll. Two out. <laughs> It's amazing when that foul foul ball behind home plate has such backspin and it always comes back towards play. <laughs> Two hands kiddos. He was a little fortunate that time. Ball almost beat him. So two out and now Lucas Dudu got the whole thing started for the Mets in the fifth inning with a leadoff home run against Corbin. His second in two days and his twelfth of the year. 
And he takes ball one from Delgado. So Corbin goes five innings plus, allows four runs, four hits, one walk, five strikeouts, and three home runs. And again, Duda has a 2 0 advantage. Been a very successful count for Lucas of late. 2 0 home run last night, 2 0 home run last time up. And this time, ball three. Starting to take the change up down. Delgado was a starting pitcher when he first came up with the Braves. Now strictly a reliever for Arizona. And there's ball four. So after the home run is last time up, Duda draws a four pitch walk. And the Mets have a two out base runner for John Mayberry. Remember when the um, the Upton trade was coming down, the, the Braves had to decide whether to deal Delgado or Julio Tehran. It would appear they made the right decision. Well, I thought it was a pretty much a no brainer looking at his numbers in the minor leagues. He was only. He thought he was the second coming of Christy Mathewson. He was only he was 29 and 47 as a minor leaguer. That's not a very good record. Mayberry's 0 for 2, struck out and flight out. Well, Tehran's had his bumps, but he has certainly proven to be the the better of the two. Certainly, as far as starting pitching is concerned, Delgado's only 25, so it remains to be seen how he's going to develop. He's Hassan. Castillo. Castillo. Where was that pitch? Yeah. Castillo says, "Forget about it." Down the middle, Randall. But don't worry about it. Come on back. A little bullpen activity, Gary. Henry Mejia is up. Sean Gilmartin is up. Matt Harvey at 94 pitches through six innings. You would presume he'll start the seventh, but who knows? I think he does. There's a strike, two and one. Diamondbacks have eight, nine, and one on the order coming up in the seventh, and Harvey's coming off his first one, two, three inning of the day. Two two to Mayberry, and he struck him out on a high fastball. So Delgado with his first strikeout finishes off the sixth inning. But the sixth inning started with Ruben Tejada hitting his ninth career home run, only his second ever at City Field. Mets third home run of the day makes it four two New York as we go to the seventh.
Dom David Peralta second batter of the game hit a two run homer off Matt Harvey. And the Diamondbacks haven't scored since much like last night when Noah Syndergaard gave up a first inning run. And didn't give up anything else. Harvey has nine strikeouts through six innings. He'll face Cliff Pennington to start the seventh now with a two run lead. And Pennington laid on the fastball nothing and one. Pennington laid down a bunt hit his last time up. Aaron Hill is out on deck. He came in on the double switch. A.J. Pollock behind him. Campbell in at the corner. This time. Once bitten twice shy. Ball and a strike to Pennington. By the way Matt Harvey with his home run today. And Noah Syndergaard hit one earlier this season. First time the Mets have had more than one pitcher homer in the same year since 1997. Mark Clark, Rick Reed, Armando Reynoso all oh. homered in 97. This year Syndergaard and Harvey and who knows what's to come. All of a sudden Harvey snapping off some nasty sliders. Bennington though takes the fastball up the middle for a base hit. Leading off in the seventh inning. Hit number five for the Diamondbacks. Wanted to come up out of the strike zone. And didn't get it up enough. Good hitting by Pennington with two strikes. After he snapped off. Oh boy, look at him shout after that. <laughs> like a warrior. Fourth time in seven innings now that the Diamondbacks have had their leadoff man on against Harvey. Aaron Hill up for the first time. He's been relegated to deep bench. Takes a strike. He had been the everyday second baseman for the Diamondbacks. Then he was filling in at third for a while when Jake Lamb was out. But Hill's at bats have now been few and far between. He had the big year in 2012 where he had 26 home runs and hit 300. Hitting just 216 this year. Harvey had 100 pitches. And Hill takes a slider for a strike, and it's 0 2. Big wide strike zone from Hurst back there. You know, this is probably going to be the day when Henry Mejia makes his season debut. He's throwing hard in the Mets' bullpen. Getting ready to come in behind Harvey. A.J. Pollock, right hand hitter on deck. 0 2 coming. And this time the breaking ball off the plate, 1 and 2. There's Henry. Henry's been up in the bullpen every day since he became eligible on Tuesday. I kind of like Henry in the short locks. One, two. Another curveball misses. Two and two to Hill. Well, the Mets have had back to back games where their starter has struck out 10 or more. First time they've done that since 99. Harvey's got nine strikeouts today. Mm. Just off the plate. Full count. I don't think the runner will be moving here. Down two runs. Pennington at first. 3 2 to Hill. He's running. It's hit out to right field. Mayberry's right there. One out. There's that fastball, Matt. It's been pounding up out of the strike zone. Well, Terry Pitt uh, pushed Syndergaard to 116 pitches last night. Harvey has thrown as many as 115 this year. He did that in Atlanta. That game he lost 1 0 to the Braves. He'll face Pollock for the fourth time. He's walked A.J. Pollock twice. 0 for 1. And he dents the outside corner, nothing in one. He's dialed it up as high as 98 this afternoon, but consistently in the 95 96 range. Well, he got the big strikeout to end last inning with a 98 mile an hour fastball. The strikeout of Chris Owings to end that inning. Might be showing a little bit of signs of tiring a little bit. This is his last inning. He's got to bull his neck, as they used to say. Bull your neck. And he's got to be careful with Pollock. He's hit 11 home runs this year. Two 
That fastball by him, one and two. And it's that tantalizing high fastball, Gary, that's up in the letters, just above the letters. And Arizona hitters have not been able to lay off of it. He threw it by him, too. So Harvey trying to take care of his former American Legion teammate. One two. It sharply should be two. Flores with the flip turned by Tejada. Double play side retire. Four six three. And that gets Harvey through the top of the seventh. Masterful work by Matt Harvey after he was in an early hole. He goes seven. And the Mets have a four to two lead at the seventh inning stretch. HR is on the right side of the ledger. First Duda, then Harvey, then Tejada. And the Mets on the strength of those three long balls of a four to two lead. Terry Collins talking about Harvey, who's done after 109 pitches over seven innings. Job well done. He was in a two nothing hole, two batters into the game, and allowed nothing after that. And hit his first big league home run. Kevin Ploiecki takes a breaking ball strike from Randall Delgado to start the home seven. Very nice numbers. And then tack on his first home run since April of 2012 when he was playing for Buffalo. It won off B.J. Rosenberg of Lehigh Valley. That was his last minor league home run. And now three years later, Matt hit his first in the big leagues. It put the Mets in front, and he kept them there. Ploiecki's 0 for 2 struck out and grounded out against the starter Patrick Corbin who went five allowed four runs and four hits. Eric Campbell on deck and then the pitcher spot here in the bottom of the seventh. Ploiecki skies one to shallow right center. And Pollock snatches it one away. It's the best way to start your weekday. Join Suki, Corey, and the gang from 5 to 9 on the Pix 11 Morning News where every story hits home. You know, one of these days we should name the gang. Suki and Corey get all the glory. Yeah, there's a whole boatload of them, isn't there? This gang. Do we have enough time? Maybe not. Or Campbell fouls one back. Campbell's swinging the bat much better. Much more aggressively. 
Hit the home run in San Francisco on Wednesday. Walked and scored in front of Harvey's home run in the fifth inning today. Curtis Granderson on deck to pinch hit. And if Curtis does pinch hit, that will keep intact his streak of playing in every game this year. That's a plate 87 coming into today, and Curtis has played in every one. There's a strike. Long consecutive game playing streaks are a thing of the past. Yep. Freddie Freeman had the longest one, short of 300 games before he got hurt. Now I think the longest one is 140, something like that. They just don't make Iron Man the way they used to. A little more travel, few more teams out west, interleague play. Hunter Pence had a long streak, played 162 two years in a row before he missed the start of this season. Full count to Campbell. I tell you what, the one season that always tires me out the most is when the Mets have to play the AL West. Mm -hmm. Well, last year was the worst travel the Mets have ever had. Five West Coast trips. A little easier this year with the Mets playing the American League East. Mets are done going to the West Coast for as for as furthest west they'll go the rest of the year is Colorado. Strike three call. Campbell is down on strikes. Second strikeout for Delgado in relief. Well, they still got the Yankees to play in Tampa Bay and the Red Sox. And the Orioles. They go to Baltimore. Well, that's right. So there's plenty of interleague. Plenty of early, unfortunately, yes. Red Sox will be at home. Curtis Granderson was on his way to home plate. He started to go back and was he announced into the game? I believe he was. Chip Hale wanted to make sure he was announced because he wants to bring a left hander in to face him. So Delgado will exit and they'll bring in the lefty Oliver Perez to face him. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by Southpaw in theaters everywhere July 24th. Here comes Ollie. Find it and drive it sales event. Visit TriStateKiaDealers.com to learn more. Oh, there he is, Oliver Perez. We got an out last night. Right back out there today. Got, got a similarly cool reception. Got Daniel Murphy to fly out to left field to end the seventh inning with the runners in score. One runner in scoring position. There's his numbers for the year. Ollie's been hot lately. They're coming to face Curtis Granderson with two out and nobody on.
Curtis is one for three as a pinch hitter this year, 227 for his career with one career pinch hit home run in 44 at bats. Now he's got that new thing where he flips the glove open as he takes a stretch. Always has a little bit of the histrionics involved. Well, he gave uh, Daniel Murphy around a, what was it around a five six pitch at bat. He gave him the old Louis Tion mm -hmm. uh, motion to get him out. I'll be Parnell getting ready for the eighth inning. So another day when Mejia gets up, but apparently will not come in the game. At least not for the moment. Anderson takes a fastball for a strike. I think Terry right now with. But to a almost one, oh, to a little less than, a little more than one game left to the All Star break. Wants to get this win. He's not going to. There's the old Tion. <laughs> Turn the back to you. Well, we see Johnny Cueto doing that these days very successfully. And Ollie's always had that in him. He he uh, he loved to mess around out there on the mound. He's got some style to him, which is fine as long as you're successful. Which all he has been intermittently in his career. I don't think I've ever seen anybody take the stretch like that with that open glove. And he gets Granderson on the slider to end the inning. So Perez gets his man, and that sends us off to the eighth. Mets going to the bullpen, leading it four to two. A Honda now at your Honda dealer. First career home run. And it gave the Mets the lead. They were down two to one. Harvey's two run homer put them up three to two. And after giving himself the lead, Harvey pitched two more scoreless innings. Now hands it off to Bobby Parnell for the eighth. Well, Parnell gave up his first run since coming back. See eight innings. He has been outstanding. It was Wednesday in San Francisco. Took a four nothing lead into the ninth gave up a run on two hits in a third of an inning and familiar came on and bailed him out throwing more breaking balls since his return. Two three and four in the Arizona batting order Peralta Goldschmidt and Tomas. This is an Arizona team that leads the National League in runs scored. They were held to two runs last night. They've been held to two runs so far today. And they've got the heart of their order coming up. So no easy task for Parnell facing Peralta who hit a two run homer second batter of the game against Harvey He's also walked one for two. And the fastball away for ball one. And it's not the same fastball you've been accustomed to from Parnell since his return. Low 90s. Yeah, 
And he falls behind on Peralta 2 0. Harvey threw 109 pitches over seven innings, two runs, five hits, four walks, nine strikeouts. Lord is ERA to 3.07 in line for his eighth win. And there's a borderline strike two and one. Mm -hmm. And Peralta watches wide, and now it's three and one. And you got Paul Goldschmidt, who's long overdue in this series in the on deck circle. Flores playing a very deep second base, around three, four feet on the outfield grass. And Peralta walks to start the eighth inning. So that gets Goldschmidt to the plate as the tying run. Not the way Parnell wanted to start this inning. Nor did Terry Collins want it to start that way. Well, Goldschmidt against Harvey today struck out looking twice and hit a weak ground ball to third base. We'll see how close to the line Campbell plays at third base. Playing very deep right now. And you can't call that guarding the line. Goldschmidt is 0 for 6 in this series. 20 home runs, 69 runs batted in, came in as the league's leading hitter. And takes a fastball for a strike. Probably dialing it up to 93. Goldschmidt 0 for 2 in his career against Parnell, but that was a different Bobby Parnell, guy who used to throw. Close to 100 miles an hour. And the breaking ball misses. The ball and a strike. Well, over the last three years, even with Goldschmidt missing two months last year, he's still third in the major leagues in RBIs over that stretch. Double play ball to short. Flores with a turn. Double play. Two men down. Wow. Second double play in the last two innings for the Mets. And another fruitless at bat for Goldschmidt against the Mets pitching staff. They have handled him, the league leading hitter. Such better defense with Tejada and Flores over at second. Flores really turns a wonderful double play. Fastball in, out in front, towards the end of the bat. The Mets have held gold check in. Goldsmith in check for two days. I hope they can do that for one more. Here's Yasmani Tomas with two out and nobody on. One for three today. And he hits the breaking ball foul. Nothing in one. Hmm. 0 for 4 today and 0 for 3 yesterday for Goldschmidt. Four strikeouts. Tough series thus far for the slugger. There have been very few dry spells for the unassuming slugger from Texas State. Ooh. That got away from him. Jake Lamb would be next. One and one to Tomas. And an easy ground ball for Flores. And so Parnell, after the leadoff walk, gets a couple of ground balls and gets through the top of the eighth. Mets four, Diamondbacks two.
24th. Rookie right hander Enrique Burgos will pitch the bottom of the eighth for Arizona. Well, 19 games for the rookie. Acquitting himself nicely. A little bit too many walks. 10 walks in 19 innings. Left handers giving him a whole lot of trouble. And look at the strikeouts. He's a strikeout guy, so it's probably got a golden arm. And he'll face all right hand batters here in the bottom of the eighth. Ligaris, Tejada, and Kadire. Patrick Corbin went five innings plus a lot, four runs, four hits. Randy Delgado and Oliver Perez combined for two scoreless innings. And now the Mets looking for some insurance on Juan Ligaris bobblehead day. Nice catch, Juan. Up against the wall. That's supposed to be bobbling, though. Well, it bobbles if you touch it. But you don't want your head bobbling when you're batting. Ligaris 0 for 3 today. Well, Jerry's familiar is getting himself ready in the Mets bullpen. Picked up his 25th save last night. Going for number 26 today. Slider off the plate, 2 0 to Ligaris. Seven years in the minors for Enrique Burgos. My goodness. He's only 24 years of age. From Panama, signed as a 16 year old. His countryman, Ruben Tejada, on deck. There's a strike, two and one. I think Ruben's got a two home run game in him. Wow, it'll be shocking. Well, remember, Granderson pinch hit for Harvey in the last inning. Otherwise, Matt. Could have had a chance for a two home run game. You know the only Met pitcher to hit two home runs in a game, right? Oh, Walt Terrell. That's right. I was at that game. Wrigley Field. I was there. Wind was blowing out. Of course. <laughs> it's familiar up in the bullpen. He did not hit a cheap one, though. If I recall, his second home run was a line drive. Walt was a left hand hitter. Right hand thrower, left hand hitter, I believe. Am I correct? I remember the line drive was to the opposite field. And my visual is of him hitting it to left center field. Lagaris tries to hold and he stopped the swing in time. The mind can play tricks on you though, Gear. Gets jammed and fouls it off. Final game of the series tomorrow afternoon. Tune in when the Mets host the Diamondbacks, beginning with Verizon Fios pregame at 12:30. Catch all the action right here on New York's home for baseball, Picks 11. Jonathan Nice tomorrow against Ruby De La Rosa. And Ligaris goes down swinging on the slider. So Burgos, after a long battle, strikes out his first batter. Burgos likes his slider. So now one out and nobody on, and now the all Panamanian matchup. Tejada already smiling. As he goes after Burgos. Ruben hit his second home run of the year his last time up. Just the ninth of his career and only the second he's ever hit home. Well the Mets have only had four hits in this game but they've made him count all the whole all four runs. Via the home run. And that was the case last night too. Four home Correct. runs. Correct. All on the home run. 
Back the Mets last 10 runs have all come on home runs going back to Eric Campbell's ninth inning shot against the Giants on Wednesday. By the way we have confirmation. Yes. Walt Terrell. Was a left hand hitter. Left hand hitter. I remember. Charles Walter Terrell. Walt was a cranky honorary guy. I liked him very much. What was his nickname? Uh, crazy Crab. Like the Crazy Crab in San Francisco? Yes. Tejada lines this one, but Peralta is in to get it, and there are two out. He. I, I don't know how he got the name. That stupid Crazy Crab was the mascot for the Giants that year. And I think that Walt. I don't know. Did something before a game with it? I don't know. It's not like the more benign mascot they have now, Lucille. I forget. Mm. I don't pay much attention to the mascots. Well, you pay attention to Mr. Matt. Well, I have to. Here's Michael Kadire, who's one for three. It's prominent on the uniform. Ooh. Castillo couldn't reel that in. Prominent on the hat and BP too. The Mets are wearing their alternate blue jerseys today with the large Mr. Met on the sleeve. There he is. M. Met. Yep. I thought he'd never make it on the uniform. He's a speed demon. To Kadire. Looking ahead to the ninth inning, the Diamondbacks will have five, six, and seven in the order. That's Jake Lamb, Wellington Castillo, and the pitcher spot against Familia. Kadire hits one out to right center, and Pollock moves over. And that retires the side. One, two, three for Enrique Burgos. Now we go to the ninth with Familia trying to protect it for Matt Harvey. Mets leading four to two. Field and bat ninth. And Jerry's familiar will go for save number 26. Well, should have made the all star team. Should he not? Is it still, is there still, could he have a chance? If somebody gets hurt or has to be replaced for some other reason, he certainly could be added. But as of now, he'll be getting four days off starting on Monday. And Jacob DeGrom will be the lone representative for the Mets in the all star game. Familiar, by the way, with his 25 saves, the fastest Met ever to reach 25 saves in an 87 games. Mets record for saves in a season is 43, held by Armando Benitez in 2001, and that is certainly well within Familia's grasp if he keeps going the way he's going. Jake Lamb will lead off in the ninth inning. Lamb 0 for 3 today, 0 for 7 in the series with five strikeouts. And Familia misses low for ball one. 
Familia had gave up a run, had a little tough time, lead off triple, had a tough time throwing strikes, but he just enabled himself to get through the inning, finished strong for his save. Comebacker. One out. More adept at fielding the grounder than the little pop up last. A night. little, not as, <laughs> maybe a little more graceful. <laughs> well, that was the last battery faced last night. Nick Ahmed, who popped one up to the third base side, and Familia just whiffed on it, but fortunately for him, Ahmed didn't know where the ball was, didn't run, and Murphy was able to throw him out easily. Here's Wellington Castillo, one for three today. Castillo had an RBI hit against Familia last night. Well, the Mets are chasing the Nationals, you know that. They're two games behind Washington. The Nats play in Baltimore tonight. They're also chasing the Chicago Cubs, who hold the second wild card spot. Mets are two games behind them. And the Cubs are trailing 5 1 to the White Sox in the eighth inning today. So there's every chance that the Mets could be within one game of the second wild card by the time this day is over. A long, long way to go. I like to raise my sights a little bit higher. Two games behind the Washington Nationals. How about getting on top of the, of the division? Campbell fields the ground ball, throws out Castillo two away. I, I think the point is that for as much as the Mets have struggled offensively and struggled at times defensively this year, they are right in position to make a run for the postseason. Jared Saltalamacchia will be the final hope for the Diamondbacks. Batting for the pitcher. Saltalamacchia, who started his year with the Marlins, came over to the Diamondbacks, but has since been supplanted by Wellington Castillo. The owner of a very long last name. He has a World Series ring, too. Yes, he does. <laughs> I hate to write out his name. I just wonder how they fit his name on the well, ring. Look, it's down his rib cage, for Christ's sake. Right, but you have that whole uniform to put the <laughs> name on. But how do you fit it on the World Series ring? Which is much smaller. I know. Forgive me. I have to use the smallest type available. Ball and a strike to self Lamaki. The old Pat and Sankey. Mm. This is the slider two and one. If Salt Lamakia keeps it going, Cliff Pennington would be next. He's sharp today, Gary. Was not sharp last night. He uh, familiar. Very sharp. Two and one to Salt Lamakia. And he fouls it off, and now the Diamondbacks are down to their final strike. Lecky got nailed by that last foul ball. And the home plate umpire John Hirschbeck giving him a moment. Off the oh, shoulder. Hurt. Or upper arm. Hurt. Either way. Life of a catcher. All of a sudden, your arm is dead. It's like when your brother punches you in the shoulder. Oh. They're always bigger than you, and it hurts. I used to do it to my brother and run away. He couldn't catch me. Bully. Two, two. It's away at 99 miles an hour. And now a full count. He struck him out, and the ball game is over. Save number 26 for Jerry Spinelia as he nailed.